guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna plant up the three window boxes on the south side of our house. We've got two three-footers, one two-footer. They are on the south side of the house, but do have this small overhang. So it's usually a really bright spot and they do receive a little bit of late afternoon, evening sun. I'm gonna take a little bit of a different approach with these window boxes this time around, at least for the rest of this spring season. We're gonna focus mostly on edibles. So edible flowers, uh, some vegetables, mostly salad stuff, and possibly some herbs. And this is what we have gathered up. So we've got a bunch of different herbs, those that can handle a little bit more shade. So chives, chamomile, oregano, parsley, there's a marjoram and Vietnamese coriander, beautiful plant here. Then we've got an assortment of greens. There's spinach and different types of lettuce, Swiss chard, a few edible flowers. So we've got snapdragons, which these flowers are edible and pansies and violas. You can also start from seed with something like this. If you have a window box or really any kind of container, these are great to start from seed, especially if you've got a little bit more shade to deal with. Kales, lettuce, uh, radish, green onions tend to do really well for me in that sort of situation. There's a bunch of different types of edible flowers you can use as well, just depending on your light situation, where your containers are placed. I had to choose things that could handle the type of light we have here. But I mean, things like calendula, nasturtiums, uh, borage, you can Google and find big lists of edible flowers that are just so much fun. But I think the main thing, if you're gonna be growing in a window box, is uh, finding things that one, can handle the light that you have, and then two, can handle the space. Um, so if you had a really Really sunny location, a sunny window, and you have a window box there, you can grow tomatoes. So long as you choose one that's compact or like a specific type of container tomato. There are small cucumber plants. So you can put a little trellis in the back of your um, window box if you want to, or let it trail over the side. But I just think it's such a fun concept, especially if you have limited space to put a window box below your window, you can open up that window, you can smell the smells, especially of the herbs, uh, and you can harvest right from inside your house. Oh my, that ash tree's probably loving it, dude. Good job. So here's my plan. You can see that there's still soil in the window box. The soil level has gone down quite a bit when we took the fall plants out, but like this soil is nice and loose still, not to say that the plants didn't utilize some of the nutrients. I mean, if this soil was all bound up with roots and other things and all, you know, full of junk, I would probably remove it and start over, but this stuff's pretty nice still. So I'm gonna add in a layer of land and sea compost, a little bit of biotone starter fertilizer, and I'm just gonna kind of mix it all together. So let's get that step done quick. Here's what I just used to top up that soil. The Lanasee compost and the starter fertilizer. Looks a lot better. I did go ahead and water them in. I don't normally do that, but I felt like, you know, mixing that compost in with such dry soil, I thought it would be better for the roots of the plants going in to go into moist soil rather than bone dry. In terms of size of window box, of course the length is gonna vary depending on the size of your window, but when it comes to depth, I wouldn't go any less than six inches deep. Ours here are 10 inches, and I think it helps in a couple of different ways. One, it helps with moisture retention, the more soil in there, the more moisture is gonna be in there and that's better for your plants, especially in like a window box or a hanging basket sort of situation. They tend to not be huge containers as a whole and they dry out quicker. Of course, that will depend on where you have it positioned at your house, what side of the house it is, if it's exposed to wind, if it gets more sun and so on and so forth. Um, I also feel like it's important for the root to run of your plant. You know, some plants are fairly shallow rooted and some need more room, but I would say that I wouldn't go any lower than six inches. Lower, is that the right word? I wouldn't go any less than six inches. You also wanna make sure that they have good drainage. That's important. Don't put anything at the bottom of them. Make sure it's soil from top to bottom, but make sure there are drain holes. Okay, so now we are ready to start arranging. And what I wanna end up with is kind of a mixture of all of these things in each window box, I think. A Little bit of color, a little bit of uh, food production best of both worlds. So I'll probably start by placing flowers because I wanna make sure that there's color in each one of these window boxes, but these are so pretty. 
like the color of a sunset. And apparently now they are edible, the flowers are, and apparently they have a floral but kind of bitter taste, so to use them sparingly is recommended. I would probably opt to use those as more of a, a garnish, like on a cake or some kind of dessert, rather than like in a salad. And then of course, these are always fun to use. I see people using these in like pasta, in cookies, all kinds of different things. For our greens, I'll probably use this Swiss chard. I'll uh, break it up into individual plants, but look at the color of stems. That's sunny yellow. Uh, these are great to cut and they keep on growing. And keep that in mind when you are planting specific greens, like the romaine will let kind of head up a little bit and then we'll cut the whole head out. Um, and then some of the lettuce is more of like a cut and come again type. So you want to just be mindful of how you're placing them. Maybe mix a little bit of both into each window box, because if you put all head lettuce in a window box and you're going to be harvesting it all out then you'll be left with nothing in your window box if you have varieties in there as well that are cut and come again then you'll have something continually growing and producing okay i'm going to get all these planted and then i will give you a tour in the end of what it looks like i'm excited goodness you guys I absolutely love how these turned out so the two three footers ended up being kind of our greens our Swiss chard spinach lettuce uh, with some edible flowers and then our two footer is what ended up being our herb window box and Benjamin just assured me that I had no dirt on my face he said you don't have any dirt on your face just a little bit <laughs> I can't tell on the camera so anyway um, I decided to do it that way instead of intermixing the herbs with the greens because the herbs will stay around a lot longer most of those are perennial here uh, so the greens you know once it gets really hot we'll want to swap these plants out probably for some summer annuals things that are a little bit more heat tolerant but for now it's going to be perfect so we've got an oak leaf lettuce here and here well, I guess I should start with the centerpiece. <laughs> centerpiece is our Swiss chard, which will grow fill in this area here. And then I clustered some of these snapdragons kind of close together because this type doesn't normally get super big. And I want them to be a nice showy piece right here. And then I just popped, I had six packs of pansies. I just popped them here and there just for a little bit of color. Some of them, like these two right here, eventually might get smothered out by the Swiss chard. And then right in front of the Swiss chard, we have a cut and come again type of lettuce. And then there are three little spinach plants and then two red romaine. So we've got nice color and texture <laughs> variation as well. I think it's so fun when you can make edibles pretty like that. And just wait, you guys, in just a couple of weeks, I mean, these things will be nice and big and gorgeous and full. And this one, there's not a whole lot that's different except for I didn't have enough oak leaf. So I put the one here and then I used some of that uh, cut and come again, more of the fluffy stuff that looks similar there. And I used a third Swiss chard in the front um, here instead of putting a lettuce right here and a little bit more red romaine. So they're not exactly the same as each other, but utilizing the same plants. And then here is our herb box, which I need to come through with my cleaner and get the, all the stains cleaned off. This is completely stained right now. Uh, but I put a chive right in the center and put a golden marjoram in front. And then I did a parsley here, a uh, Roman chamomile here, Vietnamese coriander, which you can use a lot like cilantro right here. And then there's the um, marjoram right there. And then I popped some pansies around for color and then two red romaine for a little bit of textural difference there and color difference. And here is the look from a different angle. Actually, they look a little brighter from this side. The sun is coming from this angle right now. Oh, they're so pretty. In fact, all of this is kind of subject to change. We have talked about several times how we were gonna remove the window boxes, which I do think is the plan in the end uh, because this isn't a super deep area here. I don't know how many feet that is, and I don't know if you can tell based on the way it looks in the camera, but it actually slopes toward our house, not away. So we kind of want to remove all the concrete, have it graded properly, and then have a wraparound porch built on. And when we do that, we kind of want to remove these so we have enough room for seating and all of that. But 
who knows? It feels like that project is kind of far down the road. So we're just going to enjoy the window boxes while we have them. It's just going to be so fun to watch these fill in. And just imagine, you know, especially people who maybe live in an apartment or, you know, just don't have a ton of gardening space. What a fun way um, to add in more area. There's all kinds of different window boxes out there. I mean, I've even toyed with the idea of painting these black at, at one point, at many points. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of different styles and things. And just imagine like opening your window and harvesting straight from inside your house. I think that would be so much fun. We ended up with a few greens left over, so I think we should go plant these. Hey, Benjamin, you want to come help me plant these spinach plants? You'll do it later. Are you going to go inside? Thanks for your help, dude. You're this was Benjamin's job. He was sticking all the tags in this pile of dirt while I was <laughs> planting. When I was helping my mom put their potting shed back together, she gave me this old metal, it almost looks like a colander, but I thought it'd be a really pretty planter and I think it would look pretty full of green. So I think I'll go grab that and we'll get that put together. This right here, excellent drainage. Oh, that turned out so cute. And I had just enough to fill up the container. So three red romaine in the center and enough spinach to ring around the outside and they have plenty of space to grow. The best part, the container and the moss both came from my parents' house. So they were free to me. I love the look of repurposed metal containers like this though. They have kind of a rustic charm to them that just really appealing to me. And that is gonna be it for today's projects. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing those window boxes come together. I am just really excited to watch them grow and fill in. It's a little bit of a departure for me because we usually have our food production things out in the raised beds or in the big cut flower, uh, flower garden out there. So it's fun to put them together in a different way. It keeps it fresh and exciting to me. And these little extra projects are just a bonus. It's always fun to have something uh, left over from a project that you can utilize. I'm gonna leave it in the greenhouse though tonight. Can you hear the plastic. I'm sure you can. It's just blowing around like crazy. The breeze is really picking up um, and I can see my harvest uh, cloth over our ranunculus just flying around out there. So I need to go tack that down and get things watered uh, well because I'm not sure how long the wind is supposed to last. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.